This is a critical moment for people because I think people don't realize how powerful they really are. In this realm, in the quantum realm, there's no separation. There's nothing physical. There's nothing material. There's no matter. That's all taking place in three-dimensional reality. It's all energy. It's all frequency. It's all vibration. It's all information. It's all consciousness. It's all thought. That is that invisible field of energy. Yes. So, okay, that invisible field of energy, Einstein said, the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. He didn't say the particle controls the particle, he said the field controls the particle. So if I can change information in the field, I should be able to affect the particle matter. So it turns out the atom is 99.99999% energy, information. There's nothing physical or material there. 0. 0.00001 material. When then the probability of us seeing the truth of reality is zero. Wow. And we are only seeing a small spectrum of frequency, the rainbow, visible light, bouncing off the most stable form of energy called matter, giving us this hologram, this illusion of separation. So if there was a way to create from the field instead of from matter and move closer to source, and create from a place of wholeness and less from separation, I'd have to be able to get to the field. So then, if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, and you could you develop the ability to take all of your attention off your body, all of your attention off all the people in your life, all the objects and things, your cell phone, your car, your house, whatever, all the relationships with all the people, all the places you need to go, the place you're sitting, the place you grew up, the place you sleep, the place you work, and nothing about the predictable future or the familiar past and settle into the present moment. You would go from a somebody to a nobody, uh, from a someone to a no one, from something to nothing, from somewhere to nowhere, from some time to no time. That is the moment you're pure consciousness. Mm. You would be disinvesting all of your attention, all of your energy out of this three-dimensional reality, out of the known and placing it on the unknown. Now, let's demystify the process. Take away everything physical and material in the universe. Take away the earth, take away the moon, take away all the planets, all the moons from the planets, take away the sun, the light from the sun, the stars, all the light from the stars, galaxies, take everything away. Wipe everything out physical and material. What are you left with? Nothing. Turns out that that nothing is filled with a lot of frequency and energy. And I don't know how to explain nothing to a materialist. But when you can linger in that place without a name, without a face, without a body weight, without a diet, without a disease, without a profession, without an identity in any way, without a past, and you can linger as pure consciousness, something really profound happens to the brain. Different compartments of the brain that have been modulated or compartmentalized or subdivided because of the stress hormones, you know, shift your attention from one person to another person to another problem to another thing. That habituation fragments the brain. The brain becomes a house divided against itself and you narrow your focus, you overfocus, you become obsessive about something. That's what we do in stress. We turned out, it turns out if you open your awareness to nothing, the brain starts getting highly organized. Different compartments of the brain that were modulated start unifying. The brain starts firing this more holistic state and the whole entire brain is resonating at the same frequency. Mm. Now you get that brain going for that period of time like that, waves start that are coherent start interfering with each other and when they do they create bigger amplitudes. The higher amplitude the higher the energy in the brain. So now you have resonance in the brain and the brain starts getting very mathematical very organized, right? So that brain that's coherent, the entire brain is functioning as one neurological network. The two hemispheres are coming together and there's this kind of psychic union called wholeness. Now that state of coherence, uh, in moving out of the beta brainwave states into a slower brainwave state, produces electrical signals. And that electrical signal is the intention. That's the more clear your intention is the more coherent the brain is, the stronger the signal. Okay, so if you decided to create from the field instead of from matter, and you were just pure consciousness, and I asked you to send the signal out from a coherent brain, and whatever that thing is that you wanted, you could you train we trained you how to do that, then you would be shimmering the entire vacuum, that entire void. You are, you are that. You're not you any longer. You're the source, right? So if you're the source and you're sending the signal out, then you're, you're touching the consciousness 
of everybody, of everyone, of everything, of everywhere, of every time. The entire field is becoming electric because of your intention. If you're source, why would you go anywhere to get anything? And so consciousness is coherent brain, and then the energy of the heart is love, and pure, pure love is source. So if I asked you to fall in love with that future, and I asked you to draw the future to you with the magnetic field of the heart, the heart produces a magnetic field up to three meters wide. Mm. That's, that's studied. So now, love is the glue that holds the atom together, okay? Okay, if I get a coherent heart, the more coherent my heart is, the more energy in my heart, the more I can draw my future to mm. me. So you send the signal out, you draw the experience to you, and now you don't go anywhere to get anything. When there's vibrational match between your energy and some potential in the quantum field, that when there's a match, you start seeing those synchronicities. You synchronize your energy to that possibility. And, and, and so you start seeing the coincidences and the synchronicities and the opportunities. I'm not talking about a parking space. This is a critical moment for people because I think people don't realize how powerful they really are. When that event happens in their life, they will look back at every single betrayer, everything that happened in their past, and they won't care any longer. That's the moment their past no longer exists because they're proving to themselves what they innately already know that they may have forgotten. Which is what? That is the, the, the creator of their life. Thank you.